Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, Many of you will doubtless be aware that uh, as well as being that bloke off the internet that waffles on about music, I'm also the lead vocalist and lead guitarist for a music band called The Darkness. And we have a song in our repertoire called I Believe in a Thing Called Love. Now, it seems that this song gets covered quite a lot. So um, today I've decided to react to some that I haven't heard before. Um, and I'll see if they're up to scratch. So at the end, I'm going to choose my favourite and you have to vote for yours and we'll see who wins. <laughs> I didn't bring my guitar because I've been playing guitar upstairs and I just didn't bring it down to the uh, YouTube dungeon. Sorry about that. Acapello, your favourite. Justin Hawkins rides again. 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 Um, anyway, the first one I'm going to look at is Hollow Scene, an octave higher. <laughs> if it's an octave higher than what I do it, then that's going to be fairly challenging, I would imagine. Um, it's only a short video, so this shouldn't take too long. Okay. This is, I believe in a thing called love, an octave higher for no reason. <laughs> Okay, that's a really impressive vocal. I'd be shocked if that's done live because, oh my god! I'm gonna listen to it again. What a range! This person can sing a darkness song an octave higher. Normally, when I do a cover version, I sing it an octave higher. I think that's what we did with the uh, Street Spirit Fade Out, a Radiohead song that we covered. I was doing that an octave up. This is preposterous and brilliant. Okay, so a clear favourite for winner. Um, Hollow scene an octave higher. Amazing. Um, The next one I'm going to look at is Postmodern Jukebox, uh, vintage New Orleans style. I think Frankie told me about this. Um, I haven't... I maybe I did listen to it, I'm not sure, but let's check it out. I love the New Orleans style of music. That's an amazing interpretation of the intro, at least. Can't explain all the ways that you're making me feel. It's gorgeous, isn't it? My heart's in overdrive and you're behind the steering wheel. Behind the steering wheel. Could do with some lower voices doing that stuff. I love the way she opens her voice up and gives it some real welly on that last bit. It's, it doesn't need to get screechy the way I the way I do it. Evidently, um, she just just does something fuller with her voice. It's lovely. This is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. That little sort of device at the end of the chorus, I always just go, and she's going, uh, uh, it's just great. But that's that's nearly what I do going into the, or coming out of the synth solo into the guitar solo. There's a lot of solos in our version. Three guitar solos. Yeah, you don't hear those. You don't hear a song with three guitar solos in three minutes very often. We're always very proud of that. <laughs> Love that muted trumpet interpretation of the lead break that happens after the first chorus. This is great. I wanna kiss you every minute of every hour of every day. <laughs> That's a great way to do it. But baby, everything is a okay. questions and answers to the muted trumpet why didn't we think of that it's great i mean the thing is you write a song like that and then it evolves doesn't it um as you you know play it live you you find different ways to do it and gradually it sort of evolves into something completely different i mean it hasn't evolved to this level but it feels like they've been playing this for years it's awesome You woo woo woo. You woo woo woo. I'm stealing that. Got a gig tomorrow in uh, Norway playing with Kiss. I'm going to go. Woo 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 woo. See if anyone notices. Ooh. 
That's awesome. <laughs> A clarinet playing Dan's guitar solo. Is that what they call scat singing? I hope so. Oh, that's going to take some beating. Wow, that's amazing. The vintage New Orleans style. It's just brilliant. That was astounding. Okay, so one man cover. I've got this uh, I've got this piece of text from the person doing this one. Look, guys, I get it. I'm not perfect. I was singing flat. The drums sucked. The guitar solo sucked, etc. I learned and recorded this in about four hours total time. I had no idea it would blow up like it did. If you want to see professionals play it, look, to, look up the darkness or panic of a disco's cover. If you want to watch a 30-year-old dude day drunk in his attic wearing his wife's clothes while having fun, then this is the perfect video for you. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, this is one of those ones where he somehow managed to superimpose himself four times. Count them four times. I really like the affectations in his voice. It's got a little bit of a. I don't know, there's something punky about this delivery. It's really got the range. A lot of people do that. You! But obviously, I go, you! I sort of linger a bit on the second note a bit longer. But a lot of people do that, you! I've noticed that before. And there's the flatness he was talking about. But I mean, if he's been drinking all day, that's still a pretty good effort. <laughs> oh, and he's harmonised with himself. Alright, that's really good, but I'm, I'm going to move on from that. Um, so, this is one that I'm already aware of, actually, the Panic at the Disco cover version. This is, I think this is a live one, probably from, I think, the Glasgow Barrowlands. That's Panic at the Disco. <laughs> Truly love covering other band songs. All right, that's fair. And the band I'm talking about is a band called The Darkness. Well, he's definitely got the physique for it. I'll tell you that much. Well, The Darkness had a song come out in 2003 that blew my fucking mind. And that song was called I Believe in a Thing Called Love. God, his, his audience is really eating this up. An indication that he certainly has the pipes necessary for this number. <laughs> this sounds authentic. This is almost exactly the same as we do it. The other guitar player there's giving it a bit of the Dan Hawkins as well. I mean, in terms of choreography, I mean, the inimitable uh, shape throwing that Dan Hawkins does is, well, he is imitating it, so it's evidently not inimitable, it's imitable. <laughs> Solid pre-chorus. It gets to the chorus, and I think I know he can. He's going to eat up this uh, the high bit. He's going to nail it. But I'm wondering if he gives it the Hua! going into the solo. Nice. Oh, he gave it. 
I mean, it's an it's just an, uh, an exclamation, the kind of exclamation that you would hear in the throes of passion. I think to, towards the end. What? <laughs> Another another glorious bit of harmonising. They both played that really well. Nice harmony. Oh, that's a nice touch. I should have done that on the record. See, at that point, you think, well, that's, this is an interpretation where he's added something of his own to it. This, I quite respect it. It's kind of like it's really similar to the way we do it but with a few extra extra little bits of you know yelps and gesticulations it's lovely <laughs> and then really giving it a good hash on the backing vocals we don't even bother with that live because uh, you know it was me in the studio I did all those and I know they're miming it in the video but it wasn't them singing it oh you're getting the inside scoops let's have a look at the solo <laughs> Now, which of these two brilliant guitar players will play it? The other one. And this is really, so far, it's note perfect. <laughs> nearly. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. It's nearly the same. I mean, it's perfectly, perfectly acceptable uh, interpretation. Um, that nearly thing, I borrowed that off Suggs when he's piano player was making some cock-ups and then he turned around and went nearly which I thought was one of the best put-downs I've ever seen a singer give to a musician <laughs> he's going off on one On the record, buried deep underneath all this stuff, there's uh, there's me doing a dramatic monologue going, just listen to the rhythm of my heart. Um, and uh, it got to the mix. It was like, um, yeah, I think somebody in the band said, yeah, that, that the dramatic monologue's a bit loud. Can you maybe turn that down a little bit. And uh, Pedro turned it down a little bit. Like, yeah, just a little bit more. Down, 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 down. And now you can't even hear it. But it used to go, just listen to the rhythm of my heart. Yeah, I can. I do hear that. I, I recognise that it's, it wasn't the best idea. Anyway, Panic at the Disco, absolutely brilliant. Now, Branches did a version that I think sometimes gets synchronised in like TV programmes and maybe adverts and stuff. I've, I've definitely received emails saying there's a band called The Branches, Branches that uh, have covered I Believe in Thing Called Love and they wanted to use it for something. <laughs> My heart's in overdrive and you're behind the steering wheel. I love those uh, countryfied harmonies. And do I spy, I've just paused it at 23 seconds, do I spy a banjo in the background? Is there going to be banjo on this? I want to kiss you every minute, every hour, every day. And that second verse is taken off. Touching you. God, the whole flavour of it's changed, doesn't it? This is more like, um, it's got a sort of sadness to it, hasn't it, this one? Beautifully sung. It's a really lovely version, that is. It's a really lovely version. Okay, now here's one that I've definitely never heard before. It's Gareth Bush uh, doing an acoustic wedding cover. Can't explain all the feelings that you're making me feel. Touching you. This is the perfect thing for a wedding, isn't it? You can imagine um, grown adults weeping, children disinterested and running about looking for something to do. Um, what else happens at weddings? Um, you, just, <laughs> you can imagine the um, the groom sort of looking down the aisle and nervously fingering his ring, like her ring. I, the ring. I got that joke off someone else. Uh, David Owen. Thank you. I believe in a thing called love. We'll see tons of the chorus. Just listen to the rhythm of my heart. Okay, so I feel like he's elongated that verse. Takes a lot of the intensity out of it, and maybe that's apt for one of these sort of moments of reflection when we're 
just talking about love itself and these people anticipating years and decades and centuries of happiness together. But where's the fucking guitars? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll be rocking to the s- so I didn't realise that acoustic wedding cover versions was a, was a genre in its own right, really. I mean, it makes perfect sense. It's such a big day, isn't it? It's such a big day. Called love You can imagine all the uh, people in the uh, on the pews going, and at least they're not doing it on the one. I believe in a thing called love, you know. Every hour, every day, you got me here. Lovely string quartet stuff going on. I get it, but it's a yawn fest, right? I'm going to pick my favourite now. Uh, I love the Panic at the Disco one because it's so faithful and it's really exciting that another, you know, a band like that was would be prepared to declare their love for a song like ours. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen very often and it's really cool that they did that. Um, the Branches one is a lovely reinterpretation. The Gareth one, I get it, I get it, but it's it's not my cup of tea really because it's a bit dull. Um, the one-man cover is impressive because he plays all those instruments. Um... The octave higher is brilliant, but I'd love to hear the whole song like that. Um, my favourite is number two, postmodern jukebox, vintage New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans style, New Orleans. I'm so English sometimes. Um, that's my favourite one, just because I think oh, it's, it's really clever the way the way she's um, found a way of dancing around that vocal and making it sound, I don't know, way less English and. I don't know, there's something really cool and, and bluesy about it, I think. Um, so that's my favourite. Um, use the comment section below. My my vote counts for two. Um, everyone else gets one vote and we'll figure out, or my producer will figure out who the winner was. So let me know, what was your favourite? Six brilliant versions there. Justin Hawkins rides again. What would an acoustic wedding cover of the theme tune from Justin Hawkins Rides Again sound like? like? Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos and let me know what you think in the comments section. Cheers, guys. That was fun. Nice one. Okay.